I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on surface area and volume. In this video, we will see how to calculate surface area and volume of a frustum. The question here is, the figure below is a solid cone with its top portion removed. Determine volume and surface area of the frustum. So when you remove a portion of the cone from the top, what remains, which is this portion seen here, is called frustum, right? So we'll now see how to find surface area and volume of the frustum. We are given here that the total height of the cone is basically 9 plus 3, which is 12. So this height is 12, total height, right? We're also given that the diameter of the base is 8 centimeters. There are a few things which are not known to us. One of the major thing is the radius of this circle on the top. And the other one which is not known to us is the lateral length, that is this length. Right, so L. Now we also don't know the small let's call this ls small length right of the cone removed so these are the things which are not known to us uh, let us recall the formulas for volume of a cone volume of a cone is one third of pi r square h so volume of a cone is one third of that of cylinder so if r is the radius and h is the height the volume will be this much now, what is the surface area? Surface area of a cone could be written as the area of the solid circles and the lateral. So, I'll say surface area of lateral, right, which is pi r l. And then I'll say surface area of the circles, which is pi r square, right. So, I've written them separately since uh, the cone as such will have only one circle here. The first term, however, will have two circles, right? So those will consider. Now, let us first try to understand how to find the missing dimensions. So let's begin with the height, since we don't know the height also, right? So to find the height, let me drop a perpendicular from the vertex of this cone, right? Going through the center. So that will be 90 degrees. And let's say that this total height is h, right? So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the height. Uh, no, height is known, which is 12, but we can find the lateral length using Pythagorean theorem, right? So height is 12, we know that, okay. So let's find the lateral side, L. So L square, will be equal to the height square plus this radius square. Now the radius is going to be half of 8, which is going to be 4, right? So we'll write radius square. So the length L will be now equal to height of 12 square plus radius of 4 square. So that gives you 144 plus 16, and that is 100 and 60 right so we get 160 as l square so the length will be square root of 160 so we get the lateral length of the big cone now uh, let us find the lateral length of the small cone to find that we'll consider the triangles so let me label this, let's say O, A, let's call this as B, C and D. So we have big triangle, which is O, C, D. So that is a big triangle. And this triangle is similar to the small triangle, which is O, A, B. Now, since they are similar, the side lengths will be proportional, right? Now we know this is, 3 and this is 9, right? 3 and 9. Total is 12. So side lengths are proportional. That means OD 
over the small length of O to B should be equal to OC over O to A, right? So from here, we can find the lateral length of the smaller cone removed. Is that clear? So O to D is 12, O to B is 3, that is given to us, right? And OC we just found square root of 160 and OA is what we need to figure out. Let's call it L for smaller length, right? So 12 divided by 3 is 4, so we get cross multiply LS is 1 fourth of square root of 160. Is that clear? So we get this as 1 fourth of the total length. So we got the lateral length. Now let's find the radius. Okay. So again we'll use the same relation, right? So we say the total height, which is O to D, divided by this small height O to B should be equal to the radius D to C or C to D divided by A to B. So now A to B is how much? Is C D times O B over O to D. Now C to D is 4. O to B is 3. And O to D is 12. So when you multiply, you get 1, right? So we get the radius of the smaller cone as 1 centimeter. Clear? So we got the radius of the smaller cone. Now, for calculating volume, we have the radius, the height for the big cone, and we also have radius and height for the smaller cone. So we can now find the volume of the frustum right so let's find the volume of frustum now so volume of frustum let's call it as vf will be volume of big cone minus volume of small cone correct so from the big cone volume if we take away the small cone we get the volume of frustum is that clear so volume of big cone is formula same one third of pi times radius radius is four 4 square times height, height is 12, minus volume of small cone will be 1 by 3 pi. Radius is 1 unit and the height is 3. Is that clear? So that is how we are going to find the volume. Let's calculate this value. Well, let's simplify this a bit. We can cancel this 3 with 4, we get 4. We can cancel this 3 with 3, so we get pi, and here we get 4 cube pi. Do you see that? 4 times 4 square, right? That much. So let's calculate this. So we can write this as pi, and we have 4 cube, 4 times 4 times 4, right? Which is 64. Anyway, we'll write 4 cube minus 1. So let's calculate this value. So we have 4 cube which is 64 minus 1 will be 63 times pi which is 63 pi we can write this as 63 pi or decimal equivalent as 198 we can write approximately right we'll write 198.0 i'm rounding 197.92 to 198 so so that becomes the volume of our frustum. So our answer for volume is 198 centimeter cube is volume of frustum. Is that clear? Correct? Now on the next page, we'll find the surface area. <clears throat> Now to find surface area, we'll actually need the length. We know this is 1. This is half of 8, which is 4. And we calculated the length as square root of 160, right? Square root of 160. And the smaller one was 1 fourth of that, correct? So these two values I'm going to add here in our diagram. 
to find lateral surface area. So we got this length as square root of 160 and the smaller one here will be one fourth of that. So it is square root of 160 divided by 4. Sorry. Since the ratio of the sides is this is one fourth of the total 3 and 12 is the total correct okay so let's find the surface area now so surface area will divide into two parts we'll find lateral surface area first so for the big one the formula is pi rl right so lateral surface area of the let's say a of the big one minus area of the small one we are talking about lateral so i'll write l here is it okay lateral surface area that is to say we are finding the curved surface area is it okay this this curved portion not the circles for the big one and the formula is pi r l right so for the big one r is 160 r is sorry 1 and length is 160 right so this we get pi times radius of 4 and square root of 160 right minus this will be pi times 1 and square root of 160 divided by 4 correct so that becomes the area pi r l for the curved surface right so so this is uh, so we can actually calculate this using calculator so we have uh, pi which is 3.14 times 4 times square root of 160 equals 2 and this is 158.9 let's write 159 approximately minus then we have pi times square root of 160 divided by 4 which is equal to sorry something wrong so we have square root of 160 and we are going to divide this by 4 and then we are going to multiply this by pi so that gives you 9.93 9.93 okay we go round this to 10 okay so we we'll round this to 10 so approximately 159 minus 10 so that gives you 160 area will be in centimeters square correct so this is the curved surface area of code is that clear only the curved surface area so from the bigger curved surface area we took away the smaller one right and got this answer now let's talk about these two circles so for the first term we have to add them so the circle area is what so area of a circle is pi r square so we'll add these two right so for the first term we have two circles here so the solid circle areas will be pi times this radius is 1 plus pi times this radius is 4 4 square right so 4 square is 16 and this is 1 17 pi so approximately this is how much 17 times pi which is equal to in decimals 53.4 so so total surface area equals to curved surface area of 160 plus solid circles 53.4 so we'll add 160 to this and we get approximately 213.4 
centimeter square. Is that clear to you? So that is how we are going to find the surface area for the frustum. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. We actually found the radius of the smaller cone first using similar triangles. We also found the lateral length of the cone, smaller and bigger. Then applied the formula to get the answers. I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.